So welcome, um, penultimate talk. You're still here, which is great. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, tools and scripting in Node.js, just bits and bobs that, uh, um, about Node.js, which uh, I find interesting and that maybe you guys can use yourselves. Um, so where that went. Um, so a little bit about me first. Um, my name is David Rankin. I'm a, a JavaScript consultant. Um, I have a company called Vankida. Um, I mainly do contracts. Um, and you can ping me and find me in, uh, at Vankida and various different platforms and things. Um, so this talk is a, a, a mutation of a talk I gave at Glasgow JS, which was um, on the same, uh, same title. And really, thinking about it when I was trying to sort of expand it, um, there's really one thing which is at the very beginning of this that really is foundation of everything, which is we should be automating everything. Like we should be. You should be um, trying to take the daily toil out, right? You should be um, hoping that you can, uh, you should be looking to improve your processes at all the times, at all times. Um, and it may be that to, uh, you do this for many reasons, right? You do it for efficiency. It might be quicker, it might save you time. Um, but even if it doesn't save you time, it might make you happier. Um, it might mean that your daily toil is not just so bad. Or maybe you can do the fun things you want to do. Um, and it will also be less or error prone if you run the same script all the time. Um, and when we think of scripts, we commonly think about uh, maybe build pipelines or, or something for deployment or whatever. And this talk's really about the opposite to that. Um, no, not exclusive, but the very local, about how that you can use your local environment and you can script things. Um, and you should script things. Um, so, yeah, automate it all. Now, JavaScript, right? It might not be the best scripting language for what you want to do. That, let's be honest about that, right? But as software developers in the modern age, you've probably um, acquired quite a lot of JavaScript knowledge. Whether resistant to it or not, you probably do have a lot of that. So it may be that while JavaScript is not the best scripting language for what you want to do, it might be the best scripting language for you to do what you need to do. Um, so why go and learn Ruby or why go and um, learn Python when you have all this, this knowledge here? Um, so the, I'm standing right in front of it, I should say. Um, so this talk is really about, well, it's in the name, JavaScript, it's the second half of that name. JavaScript is a scripting language. Um, like you can see it in the history of the name. So in May 1995, there was this thing called Mocha, which became LiveScript. And uh, at the end of 1995, um, Netscape, which ha uh, owned LiveScript, um, they, uh, they got a licensing agreement with Sun, who had Java. And they wanted to really um, come on the back of, the, of this great uh, superstar that was Java. They wanted to get people involved. So Java, for I'm sure everybody knows, is this compiled language. It's, it's uh, primarily server-side. Um, and they wanted to show that actually there's, there's, we can do a scripting element as well. There's a need, there's a demand for scripting. So um, let's come along and, and, and create JavaScript. They're not actually connected in any way, but uh, we need a scripting language. We need a big language. We need a, a compiled language as well. So um, so, so, so let, let's name it such. Um, so, as I say, it might not be the best scripting language to achieve a lot of what you want to do, but it might actually be quite good for, for you. Um, there's, there's something called Atwood's Law, which comes from the uh, Coding Horror blog, um, and it, it says that uh, um, any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. That doesn't necessarily mean that's a good idea, but it will. Like, uh, and we can see that more and more, and we can leverage, leverage that in action. So if we're talking about JavaScript, we're talking about scripting, we're talking about Node, which is entirely washed out. But there is actually a Node logo there. Um, so yeah, so we're talking about um, Node.js. Now, most of you will probably know what Node.js is, but uh, it is the V8 JavaScript engine from, from Chrome um, taken out so that we can uh, run it on servers. We can run it outside the browser. Um, the, it made its name f because it is a very fast web server. It was able to um, outbeat uh, Apache with a single thread. Um, but 
for, our, for this talk, really, Node is the gateway into being able to write scripts and write JavaScript that's not in the browser, because that's what this is all about. Um, it, it's worth pointing out that like, Node is actually used um, for production things. I, I'd still meet people, I, I do a lot of Node um, professionally, but uh, I still meet people who sort of think that Node is only used for what I'm gonna talk about, the tooling and the scripting and, and whatever, um, but it is used in production, it is used as web servers. The Node website claims that there's 8.8 .8 million instances of Node running um, just now. I have no idea how they got that number, they probably made it up, but it is still big. And you've got big um, people, everyone from the famous ones, the Netflix and the Walmart, but also like LinkedIn, PayPal and the rest, all use it in some way in, in their uh, infrastructure, in their production um, environment. So something to, to remember um, and consider. You can't talk about Node, you can't talk about JavaScript without talking about NPM. And we're gonna talk quite a bit about NPM in this talk. Um, NPM is the Node package manager. It is essentially the manifestation of Atwood's law because you will go there and you will find it all. Um, many, many good things, many also good things, um, but you can, you can find it all. It is the largest, so it claims, uh, open ecosystem of, of software. Um, that's, I've got the stats here, so 600,000 packages, 4 billion downloads last week. I did the, this talk, as I say, um, at the end of last year, that was 3.4, so it's, uh, maybe it was a busy week last week, but uh, there's a lot of people using this kind of code. Um, and for this talk, we can, you, can, you can search for keyword CLI, and you can see what other people are doing for making tools, for distributing them, and you've probably used many of them yourself. Um, NPM, though, is also, and, and we'll see this later, is uh, actually a very useful tool, command line tool, in your tool set anyway. So taking out the, uh, the package management side of it, it is actually a JavaScript command line tool, which we can then use to leverage to make our own. Um, and that's what we'll be talking about. So just as an example, NPM has, as I say, all sorts of things. So um, these are just a couple of examples of, of uh, libraries, very popular libraries that you can use to build your own tools and scripting. So be it taking command line arguments, being it make it look a bit pretty and nice because you're gonna get more user traction and uh, even if it's only in your own team or for yourself. Um, and you can do like silly things, you can do spinners, you can do all sorts. Um, and I suppose what I'm trying to get at here is that uh, you should be, you can leverage many of these tools um, for yourself so that you don't actually need to um, create it all yourself. So don't be put off by the fact that you want to script something, maybe something on your own local machine, and you're going to have to think about, well, what's the Node API for this and what's that? Um, NPM holds pretty much it all, so um, it's definitely there to, to use. Um, talk a bit about that again. So if we want to make scripts, um, and we want to make commonly build scripts is what many of you will be experienced with. If you've got JavaScript in the uh, JavaScript in your client, um, then your build will probably involve a couple of things. It will probably involve minification and uh, maybe it'll involve some linting and, and other such things. And commonly the place to go, or, or the common place to, to look is uh, task runners. So there, there's a whole host of task runners, like, typical of the JavaScript community, there are many options available. Um, so there's, there's things like Grunt and, uh, and Broccoli, but the one that of late has come to, uh, uh, come to dominance is, is Gulp. Um, and with these kind of task runners, we can then uh, build useful chains of, of tools that we can then um, run locally and run on the server, and, and we can do useful things. So a little bit of Gulp code. I don't genuinely expect you to read most of it, but uh, the first thing to note is that it's actually just JavaScript. Um, and and as that's what I'm trying to remind people here is that uh, actually JavaScript runs perfectly well on your, on your machine, so um, don't discount it. Um, and don't dis so we have here, you can see an example, the first example there, we have Gulp as a nice API. It's almost like a domain, um, uh, domain level language where you can say, okay, I want to source some files and I want to do something with it, I want to template it and minify it and I want to spit it out. Um, 
Um, and th this is great. It's, it's easy to discover. The documentation is quite good, at least at the very highest level. Um, and we can very quickly, in a couple lines of code, do things which maybe you thought was, was difficult to do. Reading from the file system in JavaScript, manipulating things. Um, and, and, and in the, the bottom example here, we just have a console log. Um, but uh, it just to show that it is real JavaScript. So we're not confined by these APIs. Um, and there are many, many plugins. For, for Gulp. So Gulp has a couple of thousand plugins, three and a half thousand plugins. So um, common ch things that you want to do, be it watching for files, manipulation, that kind of stuff, um, you'll be able to find, you'll be able to use and consume. Um, and, and that's great for getting started. It's great for actually very quickly seeing the power of what JavaScript to do and things that maybe your other scripts were doing before, maybe your bash scripts or your command line scripts for manipulating get or checking stuff out and things like that. Well, actually, maybe we can we can do them in different ways, or we can orchestrate it inside of, of JavaScript. Um, so it is easy to get started. There are some uh, downsides to, to Gulp and other task runners. Um, this nice high-level API is great for getting started, but it is an abstraction. And therefore, when the abstraction becomes leaky, when things don't quite click, it can sometimes be very hard to understand what's going on. If you try and debug Gulp, it can be can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, and often you're at the mercy of those three and a half thousand plugin offers. So if a new version of the tool that you're using is released one night, it is unlikely that the Gulp plugin author is watching his Twitter what, and, and they're going to immediately update the plugin. It can be days, weeks, it maybe never gets updated. So you are at the mercy of a uh, of, of, of an, another author, not just the base tool that you're using. Um, and so there's this move now to use, actually, let, let's not use task runners. Let's just use more close, uh, things closer to what um, we're used to. So actual raw JavaScript inside the JavaScript ecosystem. And that's where the power of NPM scripts come in. So um, what NPM scripts allows us to do is to sort of peel back that abstraction and we'll just run raw JavaScript with a couple of nice uh, helpful tools in there to um, chain things and, and uh, uh, to, to, to try and do the little bit of gulp and task runners that we actually use. So just for those people who aren't familiar, NPM scripts is a feature built into NPM from long ago. Um, it's the, uh, the run script feature. And you access it by npm space run space, and then, and then you put the name of your script in, and that's where the magic happens. Um, and these scripts, they're defined, and they live inside of your package JSON file. Um, so we can, if anybody is using JavaScript, they're quite familiar with npm, so there's no need to learn another thing. Um, you've already got npm here. There's, there's no layer of abstraction. We're very quickly going into just raw JavaScript, raw nodes, so the debugging experience is, is much better. Um, and as I say, there are uh, tools available to us to help ease the, the, the pain that maybe you would perceive, and there is there for, for writing scripts. So a very trivial example. Um, so we can see here, this is the package.json here, washed out awfully on this projector. Um, but we see here that we've got a scripts section and inside here, we can just name, arbitrarily name the script you want to do. So I, I, I uh, put build in there. So, um, and what I'm doing is I'm just using node to call another script, which I've stored locally somewhere inside my bin folder um, on this repo. So I can then just open up the command prompt, and I can do npm run build. And it will go, and it will find this, and it will execute the command, and it will, will do whatever I want. Um, now, we, we got this from the task runners, right? We, th this is not new. Why would I want to use it? And uh, there is a nice way of being able, because it is built into NPM, it is always there for everybody. So um, hopefully it is familiar. Hopefully, actually, it's discoverable as well. You can type in NPM run and hit enter without naming it, and it will list out what you can do. So you can very quickly get used to it. And um, onboarding and things are much easier for, for sharing that. Um, so. What I've shown here is 
doing nothing smarter than using Node to run a script. Um, and then we get into the, um, well, what does this script actually do? Because Gulp was giving me lots of, of nice things like being able to read files or whatever. So um, surely I've lost that. Um, and my pitch for this talk, if there's nothing else, is that to actually, you often don't need that because it's already there, it's already available. So um, a, a trivial example again, which I don't expect you to read the code, partly because I'm obscuring half of it. Um, but this is the idea where you have a, a, a file, which is almost JSON, so it's new line limited JSON, so it's not going to parse just nicely with json.parse, but uh, we would like to read that in any way and do something with it. So it's just slightly different. Um, and we can uh, write a script with not very many lines um, to, to do that, and we can write a script which has nice colorful output if we want. Um, we can use the helpful NPM modules um, so that we don't have to do it ourselves. And, uh, but we're also in Node. And what we can remember by that is it's like running on one single browser. So we don't need to worry about the um, problems of does this browser support this or does that. We can use the latest and greatest JavaScript to do it. So we can actually create nice clean code um, because JavaScript code can be very messy if you're trying to support IE 11 or 9 or whatever, and you know, all these other things if you're not using other tools to, to help you along the way there. So, but we can, we, can use the, we can use the latest things. We can um, use split. We can use string trimming, which is finally in JavaScript. Um, so node 9, the latest node, gives us lots of these things. So it is actually genuinely quite easy to do. The other thing that uh, people sometimes struggle with with JavaScript, um, rightfully so, is the async nature of it. So you have to uh, do a callback and then you suddenly find yourself five, six curly brackets deep and it's uh, um, quite a mess. But we're writing command line tools. So we can use the synchronous APIs. And more than you might think actually have synchronous APIs, Node itself for reading files has a synchronous API, so I can say, go, get me that file. I'm not on a web server, I'll just wait, thanks, and I'll get the result back. Um, so the same rules don't apply in the same way if you're not building high-scale web servers or you're not trying to uh, satisfy all sorts of different browsers. Um, the, it's worth pointing out, if you're locally developing in, in Mac or, or Linux and you want to and use these tools, you can just put the, like anything, you can put this hash bang, as they call it, which is the special comment at the top, um, make the script executable, and then you don't even need to worry about uh, running Node. You can just run the script, and uh, Mac will, will do that for you. Um, and that's a good point, actually, is that to uh, cross-platform, so we were talked about to uh, um, don't have to worry about different browsers, but yeah, what happens if you have some people on Linux and some people on Windows? What, 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 what are we going to do there? And it's worth remembering that <coughs> Node and the Java, inside the JavaScript world is genuinely cross-platform. Uh, Node will run ha perfectly happily on Windows. Um, so we can use that API. Many of the NPM, or most of the NPM packages will work as well and will work very well. Indeed, there are NPM packages to help us do this. So. Um, and, and some very popular ones. So we can really leverage a lot of this without having to worry about cross-platform. So don't, don't worry about the async callback hell because you're in a command line. Just, just write it synchronously and don't worry about it. Don't feel bad about doing it. Um, again, don't, feel, don't worry about the cross-platform headaches and uh, the remember that, uh, so, we can, we can have the script and that's very nice, but you can imagine that very quickly we have, um, we've moved, we can move from a script to a full blown app and we don't really want to be creating apps locally here. And um, that's not what we're about. We're about just automating small things to make it simple for our lives. NPM scripts do help us a bit and they're actually far more powerful than people sometimes give credit to. So um, we, we've seen already they're executing a remote script and that's worthwhile. Um, we can also, when you download NPM packages, you commonly get uh, command line tools out the box. So if you're testing, your favorite testing framework, be it Mocha, Jasmine, or whatever, will come with a command line tool. You can just type in Mocha. Um, and that's stored 
inside of nodemodules.bin. That's where it lives, that's where it is. So we can write this down here in a script and we can run it and that's useful. But NPM, this is such a common pattern, NPM will actually add that to the path for you. So we can just type in mocha and we can just uh, let it run and it will work out where to find it. Um, so that's cleaning up a little bit of, of your script. So we don't need the task runner to have a plugin to run Mocha. We can just, we can just run it directly there um, quite cleanly. We also, one thing the task runners do give and is the ability to chain commands. So I want to do my linting after my build or I want to clean a directory before I do my build so I don't have any artifacts left over. So NPM scripts again help us with this. So you can have a, a command called test and it, it can do whatever it needs to do. And then you can have another command called pretest. And when you type in npm run test, it will first look and see, is there a pretest script? If there is, it will run it before. And then subsequently, there's also a post test as well. Um, so we can, we can use these to, to hook on and we can of course you, uh, run other scripts, other npm scripts inside ours as well. So we can chain them that way. We can also use this syntax, the double ampersand, which is a command line syntax. This is not anything special inside of NPM. But this works in Windows as well as in, in Mac, and it allows us to run one command and then the next. So we can run, we can hooks, we can run uh, one command, then subsequent command uh, as one discrete thing. So in this case, I'm testing and then I'm, I'm doing my, my linting afterwards. So there are there's a lot of power built into what seems like a very simple feature um, and is commonly overlooked by people doing local dev. Um, there's also actually NPM puts a lot of environment variables into your scripts as well. So you can, your entire package.json is actually available to you without having to read it inside your NPM scripts. Um, this maybe has slightly more cross platform problems because environment variables the notation is different depending how you read it, but uh, you, you can do things to, to make that easier for you. So you don't need to even read in the package uh, yourself. So if you want to maybe stamp the version onto the output that you have, you can, you can use the environment available just right there. Um, you can also, like I said with this, this Mocha tool here, um, when I install an NPM package, I, for, for Mocha, I get this, this command line tool, which I can type in Mocha. Um, and that's written purely in JavaScript. So how does it, how does it do that? Well, you can actually add a, a bin, uh, just like scripts, you can add bin and you can, you can name it. Uh, so uh, inside of Mocha, there's um, a, a bin entry called Mocha and it will point you at a JavaScript file. And NPM, when you publish that, will wrap it up for you so that it can be accessed just like we can run here, um, just as we run Mocha. So, NPM will also go to great lengths when installing it on the client uh, machine to make sure that it's gonna work in your platform. So it will make sure it will work on Windows or Mac because it knows what the script is and it will make it work for you. Um, and, and there are many more powerful things there. Just to show a quick example, just to, because sometimes it is easier to, uh, This is the, the script that we've had just now. I'll move the command over a bit so that we don't, it's not just in, oh, that's not what I wanted. So if I do npm run test, we know from here that we're gonna run Mocha and I've got a wee test set up, but we're also going to then run the, the pretest. So it's gonna echo saying, hello, let's do some testing. And then it's going to do some post testing, which is going to, um, output the version of the package.json, which it hasn't done, so the demo gods are not with me. <laughs> um, so simple, it's entirely washed on that screen, I apologize. Um, but this is very simple, npm run, give me a list of everything I can run. So very quickly we can start develop, we can see actually what it's actually doing. So um, I notice, so just, we, we, we have Mocha here, so we should be able to type in Mocha. Well, no, we don't actually, because remember that's installed locally. So we have to, if we're on the command line, we have to go into this special package. And that's what NPM scripts is giving us, is that um, adding it to the path so that we've got it there quickly. Um, and that's, that's useful, I suppose. But uh, there's actually, 
for a number, of pack, a number of scripts that you want to run, you don't really want to install it locally. You don't want to do npm, um, uh, npm install, take it down, get the latest version, call it in your script. Um, and, and this syntax here of the known modules.bin is quite awkward for somebody to use. So that may be if you're trying to spread a wee script around the team saying, look, you don't have to do this um, the old fashioned manual way. You can uh, use this lovely script and you want to share it. Then th this is maybe a little bit more cumbersome. If people are maybe not willing uh, to do it, this is a good excuse to say no. Um, so if I go back here, <laughs> npm realize that this is the case. So they have a new tool out. Um, I say new, it's, it's last year, whatever, um, MPX. And this is trying to solve the scenarios which are a bit awkward with NPM scripts. So those scenarios like I was talking about where you want to just um, easily share code. So um, I'm going to go actually back to my command line here. So NPMX is, as I just see here, um, just installed just like npm. It's a new command, it's available to us. So I have here uh, just to show you what I'm about to run. Um, there is an npm package called happy birthday. And what it does is it says happy birthday to you in various different languages. It's, uh, um, now, if we were writing an npm script for this, then we would install happy birthday down, and then we would uh, put that command thereabouts, running happy birthday uh, with David in there, and we could then npm run happy birthday and it would all be fine. Um, and, but what was awkward there is that, well, if I, I don't really want to install it locally, it's just it's a bit of fun. Um, and what happens if happy birthday updates? So instead of supporting just three languages, it supports a multitude of languages, I would like that. Um, but I have to remember to update it. So npmx solves a lot of these problems. So if I just copy this here and pray that the Wi-Fi is not entirely gone, we'll see. It's, I don't know what language that is, but it said happy birthday to me, or I am told by the authors that's what it's doing. Um, so let's just think about what that's done. That's gone to the npm registry. It's found a module called happy birthday. It's pulled it down and then it's run it. And it's run it just as if uh, it hasn't put it into some strange place. Well, it has put it in some strange place, but it's, uh, it's run it easily without any ceremony, without me having to type in node modules.bin. Um, and what's great here is that uh, if I was to look inside node modules, happy birthday's not in node modules. It's not been saved. Um, it's not uh, been installed. And this is useful because you see if I run it again, it will go again to NPM and it will get the latest version down. Um, and this is really good for generators. Um, so if you're trying to create a React app and use the Create React App uh, uh, tool, then you probably want the latest one every time because you do it once in a blue moon and you'll have it installed locally um, or even worse, you've got it installed globally so that you've got to then update it globally and, and that's just a bit nasty. So NPX is trying to solve these problems. Um, but NPX doesn't need to uh, always hit the network every time. So if I want to just run Mocha, I can do NPX Mocha. Instead of, and that's just done the same as the lo hitting the local version, node modules, bin, mocha. So um, it has got us running this very fast. We haven't even needed to use uh, NPM scripts at all. We've just been able to run. This is the raw uh, package that's come down from the registry that I installed locally. So um, this could be really very, very powerful. Um, but it doesn't stop there because sometimes you don't want to publish to the NPM registry. Um, so maybe you have uh, Git repositories that are local to your uh, organization for security reasons or just because people are too cheap to pay for GitHub, I don't know. Um, we can actually run, uh, we can actually, down here, um, we can actually run NPX where it will actually hit GitHub directly or indeed any Git uh, remote repo, and it will do just as what it was going to do um, if it was an NPM package. It's going to go, it's going to get the latest data, it's going to run that, and it's going to say, hello, D Scotland, in the shape of a cow, um, because that's what everybody needs. 
Um, so, so this is really powerful, and actually it'll even work on GIFs as well, or just you know, um, single line scripts. So you can start sharing your code, this useful thing that you've, uh, that you've developed with your team without having to worry about, can I publish this, can I not? Don't worry about it, just as long as it's available to your team, you can suck it in through MPX and, and use it and run it. Um, and as I say, it's getting the local every time, which is very, very useful. It's as fast as what you'll get if you run it, if you install it locally as well. So um, yeah, don't worry about that performance. Um, obviously, if you're hitting remotely every time, then that's, that's different. Um, so as I say, great for generators, great for um, sharing code without that same sort of uh, ceremony. Um, it also will give you a lot of the things that NPM scripts are giving you as well. Um, I haven't put it in the demo, but uh, you can look at the docs and it will be able to pass in those environment variables and other things. So you can really start getting very creative and a very quick way of running it. Um, so let me just... A wee tangent. So, um, I, I I do a lot of Node, but just but even before then, a lot of JavaScript, and uh, it's sometimes hard documentation. Sometimes hard to work out. So how how do we uh, how do we use this new tool? New tool? Um, how can I test this out? I can create a script and run it, but uh, sometimes you want something slightly more playful, if I could use that word. Um, and many languages, many scripting languages, have a REPL. Um, and uh, JavaScript through Node is, is just the same. So a REPL is a uh, read, evaluate, print loop. So it takes nothing more than you type in something, some JavaScript, it will evaluate that, it will then print out the result, and it will do it all again. Um, so if you're in the console inside of Chrome, you'll be very familiar with that, that's what you've been using. But sometimes you don't want to load up Chrome and get the right page so that you've got the right packages. We can use Node again, um, just natively. So, so if I just type in Node here, and I'll move it up a little bit so people can see. So if I type in Node without running anything, I'm in the Node runtime, I'm in the, uh, the, in the REPL, and I can just type in anything that I want to, right? This is just a, um, simple JavaScript, and this, this is quite Useful, I suppose, for playing around. I, for one, can never remember the new names of the, um, the array function, so I always go, is it includes? No. Oh, yes, it is actually includes. Huh. I was supposed to get it wrong. Huh? So, so I usually say contains, and then, I, then it goes includes. So, um, so I can quickly see here, that says undefined, not that you can probably read it, sorry, but uh, we can quickly see, actually, that's there and that's not. Um, and then we can start playing with it as well. So something I also like doing is... Uh, chaining my functions together, so I'll maybe convert, I'll use a map to change it to something else, and I'll filter it down, I'll get it wrong all the time. Um, and it's really easy to just keep on iterating over here. Um, now, a REPL also has some nice benefits, like it will save the last thing that you evaluated with underscore. So that was two, so that's the same value there. So this gets really useful if I want to do get an array and then I want to map it to something. Again, able to use the same, I know that's not a very useful map, is it? It's, uh, um, but uh, again, we can use the um, latest JavaScript so we can, uh, um, and, and then we've got the stored here so I can then try and filter on it and uh, so I can just do underscore dot filter and work from there. Um, so this is just very useful. Um, at some point though, when you're playing around with it, you can get quite into it and you could really do it with a couple more lines because um, having to fit it all in one line is a bit awkward. So just type in editor. And then we have some free text here so we can, we can write something a bit more complicated. Um, We'll just do something very quick, but uh, you get the idea. And then we do control D to get out of it. And then I've got a high function. <coughs> and that's been available to us. So the, the, the reason I point this out is not that I expect people to be spending a lot of time doing this, but it is a useful tool that is commonly overlooked. And whether you're doing Node or not, it can be very powerful for playing with it. You can also require things in here. So I can actually just do... Uh, um, 
to require, for, for those that don't know, is the way of, of uh, reading in files, um, NPM packages and the like. So, uh, so I, have, I have a function called hello, which was saved in a file, so I can play with this. And it's really useful to actually um, keep running through and uh, uh, just messing around. Regex is another one which I find I have like no luck at remembering. So you can then play with it here. Um, so useful. Yeah, that's just just in case the demo didn't work. But you get the idea. Um, you can, as I say, you can play with regexes. You can require in your favourite tools and, and this sort of stuff. Um, I'm coming to the end. Um, so. But I just wanted to put up a slide to sort of say that we've been talking about what seems like very trivial scripts. Um, so maybe you're thinking, actually, I'm never going to use this. Or actually, I quite like Gulp, so I'm just going to stay with it. And uh, OK, fine. Um, but you can do a lot. You can uh, wipe uh, file systems. You can convert data. You can really do very powerful things. And, and there are many NPM patches that allow you to interact with external tools as well, be it Git or whatever. So if you're doing three or four things, um, all the time, repeatedly, then, then think about scripting them and think about using JavaScript and Node to do it. Um, I, I put up a couple examples of what, I, um, what I've done in the past. So powerful build change is often what's used. Um, so that's where you commonly see it. So um, we can you know, stamp, get hashes, we can uh, validate. So I, I have uh, JavaScript that's actually reading PO files, which are translation files, and validates them, make sure that they're, they're in the right form. Um, so that's not actually manipulating JavaScript files. It's just JavaScript was the tool that I could quickly use to, to do it. Um, and then you can, the typical one, coordinating your build chain so it minifies and it stamps it and it, uh, it does everything it needs to do. Um, you, you can do some more interesting things. There are um, uh, Recast and Exprima allow you to read in JavaScript files and, and play with them a little bit. So you could like add comments to it and, and all sorts of stuff. So there are really very powerful scripts that you can do. Um, the script I wrote for this was many, many, many lines um, over multiple pages, but it still had the value. And I still wouldn't have done it in anything other than JavaScript because it was, it was very convenient to do. Um, and it's still available just through an NPM command. Um, and the last, we've been talking about scripts, we've been talking about small things. I said at the beginning, we don't want to build apps. But actually, sometimes building apps is, is useful. It's, uh, we don't always write web pages. Um, so there's, there's two things to talk about. The first is uh, PKG package. Um, this is really handy for if you're creating a command line tool. Maybe it's an internal organization. We have one of these um, in the project I'm working on just now. And we want to distribute it to all sorts of people. Um, people who are not developers. They often don't have control over their own boxes, their own machines. Um, so the thought of them having to explain to them to install nodes and then to make sure NPM set up or whatever is just going to be too much. It's just going to. So suddenly we're then back to can we use MSI installers or whatever. But there are other ways of doing it. So package is a nice tool that allows you to take node, the entire node um, runtime, and it will package your script up with it. So it will actually be a runnable executable um, for various different uh, in different platforms as well. So this is a good way of taking those scripts and reaching out to people who aren't developers. Um, and then Electron, I just put the Electron uh, uh, logo in at the, the side there. And that's just because um, Electron is the, it's the framework that's currently being used to create some of the very popular apps just now using entirely web technology. If you're using Slack, if you're using uh, VS Code or Atom for your editors and this sort of stuff, Hyper for your terminal, all of these things are actually just, that's just JavaScript and the web technology is built on top. So you can really go very far with it. Um, so JavaScript is really not just for the, for the browser and uh, you can automate a lot with of what you want to do. Um, so that's me. Um, nothing else to say. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any questions. No? Yes? What's a, what's a good way to debug those scripts? I mean, if you're going to be writing them, you're going to be making them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so debugging, it used to be debugging a node was was horrible, like it really was horrible. But now it's all built in, so you can, uh, if you type in, uh, if you just prefix your commands with dash dash inspect, then it will open up a web socket and use the uh, the I think it's the Chrome debugging API uh, uh, protocol that it uses. So um, if you've got Chrome 
dev tools open, you'll actually see a wee node icon appear in the top left, and you click it, and then you're in. You can use your breakpoints, you can evaluate uh, in the REPL, essentially, you can evaluate there, just like you have the browser experience, but you can do it there, so um, very handy. And then there's also console.log, which is what we all use anyway, so that's, <laughs> um, But yeah, so it's, it's easier than you might think. Have you seen a common use of um, gulp and, and run to be to run tests? I mean, what's yep. the R system? Yeah. What would be the alternative in these cases? So, so there are lots of, of watching. So you wouldn't write it yourself. You wouldn't, now, it should be said Node does have an API for using it, but it has some problems. So if you look at any of the big tools that do this kind of thing, including Gulp, they'll commonly use one or two common packages. Um, so I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but you would just down, you'd NPM require that package and use the API. Um, and it's worth pointing out that you will encounter tools, be it React app or generators or, or, or Gulp, and you'll think, actually, that's quite good. I wonder how they do that. The beauty of open source is that you just look and see what, what they're including in the package or JSON file. Um, and it's the most reliable way of finding quality NPM packages, because there are far too many out there. Um, the most reliable way is just looking, see actually what, uh, what's, what's the tools that I respect using. Um, Uh, what issues uh, that I was facing when uh, using Node to have some scripts on, you know, uh, stuff that was helping development? Uh, was that uh, people's Node installations were really out of date? Uh, that sometimes uh, packages wouldn't run if they would require a Node? Uh, people's package stuff was out of date, so they wouldn't go in and run the NPM install every software and things. Does using PKJs so, yes, yeah, so there's, there's two solutions now. So it is true that like you are dependent a bit on the node install that you have if you want to use it natively. So um, the two ways out of this, if you're going to accept that people are going to have node, and as long as you get up that far, then MPX, as I said, is the, the tool that will make sure they're using the latest. So you don't have this uh, NPM install ritual that you've got to go, there's less ceremony. So. Um, if you can take that as a given, so maybe it's developers, then that's good. Um, if you are looking further to people who maybe are not using Node a lot, then uh, PKJ is useful. It's worth saying though, they're gonna be big distributables. Um, anybody that's used like uh, Slack and Atom and things at the same time will know that like, you know, this, they're big. Um, but, uh, but there are ways of doing it easily. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah.